we live in a world, Heine, where there's an expectation of doing more with less. People are very much overwhelmed, I think, with uh, the pressures of their job and the demands of what they have to do. Uh, is there a role for a coach uh, to help deal with that pressure? Yeah, there's, it is fairly prevalent. The demands are relentless. And this is a normal environment that we're working in today. And people um, staying focused on what it is that their agenda is and what it is that they want to achieve generally, in my experience, have been the ones that have best coped with those relentless demands. Um, I, I always use the story of the dog in the hunt. When a dog is chasing the rabbit, there is no time for fleas. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. But it's extraordinary what fleas we can come up with when we're not in the hunt. So this is about passion for purpose. People that are driven, that are goal-driven, that are oriented by what is it that I'm going to achieve today that is going to fulfill part of my vision? How can I inspire the people that I'm leading that we're all chasing that same vision? When you're in the flow of that, there is no time for overwhelm. Um, my experience has been people that um, are approaching overwhelm or that are you know, in a situation of potential burnout have lost their way, they've lost their spark, they've lost their purpose. And from a coaching point of view, it's actually not that difficult to bring them back on track if we remind them of what it is that they set out to achieve in the first place. And very quickly, we can major on the majors and people forget about the fleas and mm. people forget about the minors. To what extent would you say that resilience is an important feature uh, to have as an individual within a corporate context and the ability to pick yourself up when life inevitably drops you in a heap somewhere? Absolutely. And, you know, the, the winners and losers uh, in any sporting game, if you look at um, the point where in a tennis match both players have been through four or five sets and we're down to the last tiebreaker, the game is won or lost in that final bit of resilience. And I, I, I think in a business context, this is very true. The difference between winning and losing is very, very small margin. And I think the resilience is a major differentiator in that. And that resilience comes from trusting who you are, believing in what you're doing, and having a passion for wanting to excel. That's the difference. So to what extent is that a, an innate quality? Uh, is it something that uh, everybody can uh, develop or is it only specific to some people? I think it's a muscle, Stephen. I think it, if, we, if we don't use it, we lose it. And if we constantly work on that, to me, it's part of that fabric of wanting to keep growing and keep improving ourselves and being the best we that we can be. Then I think that muscle is always exercised. Mm -hmm. Something I've noticed with conflict is some people thrive on conflict and it gives them energy. Yep. Other people just, you know, crash and burn, basically. Yep. Yep. Is, it, is it the same with some of the things we're talking about here? Yes, I think there are, there are uh, good parallels there. My experience as a coach is that um, where people have conflict that they can see on the horizon, preparation is very valuable. And having somebody in your corner that can help you confidently prepare for that looking at all the different perspectives that are possible in the way that we can approach that has people coming out of the corner very, very confident. And I think it makes a huge difference. So it can be learned and I think it can be overcome. Okay. So, so this notion of being overwhelmed is just a state of mind. Is, is that really what you're saying? I believe it is. I believe it is. We all go through it mm. and it's when we find ourselves slipping that it's very important we have people around us that can observe that and say, mate, you're slipping. Have you noticed that? This is what a coach will do, but we don't always have the coach around us. But a lot of people, a lot of my, my uh, clients will just pick up the phone when they know that there's a risk here of slipping, they'll phone for a pick me up. Mm -hmm. Heiner, in a busy workplace, it must be very difficult for executives to stay focused uh, on their agenda and to hold the course. How, how important is it to do that? And are there any way, practical ways that we could do that? Well, volatility is part of the game today. It's around us all the time. If we look at the GFC, if we look at where we're at today, if we look at uh, the cycles, um, that's inevitable. And the pressures 
to maintain a consistent performance, certainly around the numbers on a quarterly results basis, uh, you know, has never changed since that's become part of our life. So um, agenda diversity is always going to be the case. And I think um, an area that I've found pretty prevalent in organisations today, trying to stay ahead of all the change, is what I call business improvement projects. And um, they enhance the business, but they also interfere with the agenda that has been agreed and that is that we're focusing to chase each one of us, our KRAs, our KPIs, our, mm. it's the result areas and, and, and mm. the performance measures. And these usually come over and above those. And there are many outside pressures that come over and above those. And at the end of the day, my experience working with executives is to know which are the areas that I need to focus most of my attention on and at the expense of what. What value the coach brings to the party in that is to help them sounding board, that is to bring the perspectives, to challenge the different uh, aspects of their thinking and to help them come to the conclusions themselves, this is where I'm going to focus my energy, this is my agenda, this is the agenda I'm going to stay true to. These are the areas that I need to add to that because I can't ignore them. And these are areas that are noise that I can differentiate away. Perhaps I can delegate those, perhaps I can outsource those, perhaps there are other ways that I can deal with those. But agenda focus to me is part of raising your game and staying on top mm. of that game. Many of the things you've talked about uh, in, in some respects sound like time management. Is that being a little crude, do you think? Is it more sophisticated than that? Yes. Um, I learned recently um, that it's more relevant to consider energy management than it is pure time management. That really resonated with me. And, you know, energy management is where do I focus my energy? Where do I focus my passion and my attention most? And I think that um, it's how do we major on the majors? Yeah, so um, a lot of clients um, are able when working with a coach to get clarity on that and I think that's an area that if I think back of all of my coaching programs I don't think that there is one where we don't deal with that because mm. it's so relevant today. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to focus on uh, the role of politics. Politics are uh, indispensable in, in life and in business. Um, are all politics bad? No, I don't think all politics are bad. Um, we need to be aware of politics. And uh, politics can be um, under the radar. They can be subversive. Um, there are bad politics. And, and bad politics really um, come from an overly unhealthy ego or people imposing their agendas on the corporate agenda, um, undermining, destabilizing, misleading, um, there's an, an awful lot of words that we can use there that are relevant and prevalent when it comes to politics. Um, my clients learn that we need to be aware of politics and certainly we need to protect our turf and protect our team. We may well be more versed in being able to deal with politics, but the people that we lead uh, are often quite exposed. And I think it's very important that a leader um, understands where those risks are and is able to help people confidently protect their turf. So that's the bad politics aspect of it. All right? I also think that there are um, ways of dealing with bad politics. Um, in my time, I've exposed many a bad politics for, for what they are. And we've got to know when to pick the right timing and uh, when not to. There are times when we will have more leverage and there will be times where it would be more risky and in fact we could, by trying to expose it, actually aid their particular agenda. This is about spin. And so knowing when to engage and when to expose it uh, in our internal network, I think it's very important that we can uh, lean on that and leverage that so that we understand where those energies are and how we can best deal with them. Um, I've often coached clients in the use of good politics. 
So if we have an initiative that's very important for this client to drive through their particular organisation, um, I call it drip feeding. In fact, I have a, a blog um, by that particular name where we work through um, a process of managing the right stakeholders so that we can drip feed different stakeholders at the right time at different times without them all collectively understanding from a need to know perspective and when we think that we've got enough momentum across that that we can then harness all of them collectively so that can be a very very powerful way um, of driving an initiative through mm. all right call it manipulative mm. if you want mm. call it politics if you want but this is part of winning and part of being in the camp of an executive and helping them through those particular outcomes. Mm. So I don't think we can avoid politics mm. and neither should we, but we, I think we need to know when to harness them and when we need to be aware of where we've got to do something to subvert them. Mm. This is where a coach can really help. Yeah. Politics is often about power and those who have power and those who don't. If you're an executive who feels that they're outside the, uh, the power domains, are there any ways or strategies that one can break into to the areas of power? I think that's a, a very good question and it's, it's fairly common. So the inner circle is seen to be the group uh, that holds the power. And I think this is where a coach helping somebody with grooming their particular communication skills and particularly their influencing skills can get them closer into that particular group. Uh, picture you at a networking event, event and there's three or four people in a group talking and you want to join that particular group. So what we'll all do is approach the group and stand in a position that after a while they will open the door for us to at least be part of the circle. At that point in time we usually haven't said anything yet. Mm. It's what we're able to say relevant then to buy into their particular conversation so that we become part of that group. If we can use that as a metaphor, mm -hmm. that's really what we're trying to achieve in engineering a way into that inner circle. Relevance to the agenda that that circle is dealing with is going to be tantamount to that. And having that group recognise that we can bring a value to that. We're all driven by what's in it for me that group is dealing with a what's in it for me. If we can understand what that what's in it for me or for them is, we can work to that. This is where a coach will be working with a client to help lead from behind that they can confidently engage and broker their way into that situation. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.